Sutra. Disciples of the Buddha, once the Bodhisattva Mahasattva dwells secured in these ten dramas, then he can perfect ten kinds of purities. What are the ten? They are the purity of penetrating profound dramas, the purity of drawing near to good knowing advisors, the purity of protecting and upholding all Buddha's dramas, the purity of comprehending the realm of empty space, the purity of deeply entering the Dharma realm, the purity of contemplating boundless minds, the purity of having identical good rules with all Bodhisattvas, the purity of non-attaching to compass, the purity of contemplating the three builders of time, and the purity of cultivating all Buddha's dramas. Those are the ten. Commentary Disciples of the Buddha once the Bodhisattva, who is a Mahasattva, a great Bodhisattva among Bodhisattvas, dwells in these ten kinds of dramas, then he can perfect and be endowed with ten kinds of purities. What are the ten kinds of dramas of purification? They are as follow. The purity of penetrating profound dramas, understanding that all dramas are not produced and not destroyed, is a kind of purity. The purity of drawing near to good knowing advisors. Good advisors teach us to follow the rules strictly and rely upon the drama to cultivate. Evil advisors have devil knowledge and devil views and teach us not to follow the rules and not to cultivate according to the drama. So, in cultivation, one should draw near to good knowing advisors and stay far away from evil knowing advisors. In that way, one can attain to purity. Otherwise, one won't be able to. The purity of protecting and upholding all Buddha's dramas. If, as disciples of the Buddha, we should at all times take protecting the Buddha Dharma as our personal responsibility, we shouldn't simply look on when someone is destroying the Buddha Dharma without voicing any objections. If we are that way, we have not done our best to protect the drama, which is our job. For that reason, we should guard and maintain all Dharma doors proclaimed by the Buddhas so that they will survive and the proper drama will always be in the world. The purity of comprehending the realm of empty space. Basically, there is not one thing. So where can dust alight? The underlying basis is therefore pure. The purity of deeply entering the Dharma realm, profoundly entering all Dharma realms and uniting in one substance with the entire Dharma realm, which is another kind of purity. The purity of contemplating boundless minds. One contemplates how the basis of the limitless and boundlessly many minds of living beings is pure. The purity of having identical good rules with all bodhisattvas. One wishes to identically cultivate the same good rules as all bodhisattvas, so that upon accomplishing the good rules with bodhisattvas are endowed, one at the same time attains to purity. The purity of not attaching to compass time divisions. For cultivators, they are no long and short intervals of time. They have no need to attach to time. For example, when a churn session is going on, you shouldn't have false thinking about how the session isn't over yet. Once the session is over, you start being lax again. But if during the session you can be very energetic and applying thought with single-minded concentration and make your Kung Fu come together, when your Kung Fu has reached the utmost point, then you will very naturally open enlightenment. But it has to reach that utmost point. It's the same as mountain climbing. To reach the summit, you have to take the final step. If there's one step left before the top, you must take that one last step or you won't reach the summit. If you go backwards instead, then it will be easy to take a fall and roll down the mountain. You all know about the two monks who are cultivating bowing once every third step. They are battling with birth and death right now. They keep ascending in their cultivation, going up and up, 
but then when the test arrives, they don't pass the test, and all they can do is begin the cultivation all over again from the start. They want to bring a halt to emotional love, to cut off desire and cast out love. They keep cutting it off and cutting it off, but when it gets cut off to the utmost, it rises up again. That's the kind of struggle they are engaged in during this period. Why does emotional desire re-emerge? It's because false thinking arises. If there were no false thinking, then emotional love would be emptied as well. When it's emptied, true natural purity is revealed. So cultivators of the way shouldn't look forward to the trans session being over. And even after the session, we can still continue to apply effort evenly and continually until the water vanish and the mountains end. Then, when the wind turns back and the road turns around, at the top of the hundred foot pole, one takes a further step. Then, one can return to one's original phase, the purity of contemplating the three periods of time. The Bodhisattva employs the wisdom of wonderful contemplation to contemplate how past time, present time, and future time or a pure without defilement, and the purity of cultivating all Buddha's dharmas, which enables one to return to purity. Pure dharma doors are those of not having greed or defilement. That way you can be pure, but if you are greedy and defied, greedy for emotion and greedy for love, greedy for wealth and greedy for sex, greedy for fame and greedy for profit, if you are greedy for wealth, fame, sex, food, and sleep, or else greedy for nice forms, nice sounds, nice smells, agreeable tastes, pleasant sensations of touch, the states of the five desires, all of that is defined and you are not pure. You shouldn't be greedy for anything. You shouldn't have even the most subtle thoughts of greed, and then you'll be pure, and your cultivation of all dhammas of all Buddhas will be pure of well. Those are the ten kinds of Dhamma doors of purity. Sutra, Disciples of the Buddha. Once the Bodhisattva Mahasattva dwells in these ten dhammas, then he can perfect ten kinds of vast great wisdom. What are the ten? They are the wisdom to know the workings of all living beings' minds, the wisdom to know all living beings' karmic retributions, the wisdom to know all Buddha Dharma, Buddha's dharmas, the wisdom to know the purport of all profound principles of all Buddha dharmas, the wisdom to know all doors of Dadani, the wisdom to know all eloquence of phrasing, the wisdom of skill in means with language to know the sounds and modes of speech of all living beings, the wisdom to make his body appear universally within all worlds, the wisdom to universally appear reflected in all assemblies, and the wisdom to be endowed with all wisdom in every location of undergoing birth, those are the ten. Commentary, Disciples of the Buddha. Once the Bodhisattva, who is a Mahasattva, dwells in these ten kinds of dramas, then he can perfect ten kinds of vast great wisdom. What are the ten? They are the wisdom to know the workings of all living beings' minds. One is able to know that what living beings are thinking and intending to do. One knows all they do externally and all that happens internally in their minds with this kind of wisdom. The wisdom to know all living beings' karmic retributions. One knows the kinds of karma they created that leads to, they lead to their undergoing the corresponding retributions. The process of giving rise to delusions create karma and undergoing retribution can't be off by a hair, and one has the wisdom to truly know it, not just guess at it. One really opens the wisdom, opens the wisdom eye, and illumines the prior causes and subsequent effects. The wisdom to know all Buddha's dharmas, having the wisdom to understand all dharma spoken by every Buddha. All ten of these wisdoms spring from the previous ten dharmas of purity. This Bodhisattva also has the wisdom to know and understand the purport and drift of all the most profound and difficult to understand principles of all Buddha dramas. 
He also has the wisdom to know all doors of Dharani. Dharani is a Sanskrit word that means uniting and holding, uniting all dharmas, holding the mutless meanings. It also means uniting and holding precepts, samadhi and wisdom while putting to rest greed, hatred and stupidity, uniting and holding the body, mouth and mind so that there is no violation through those three kinds of karma is another interpretation. This also refers to the Dharani doors of the various kinds of mantras, for mantras unite all dharmas and hold the meatless meanings. He also has the wisdom to know all eloquence of phrasing. He can understand and speak all the different languages of all countries without encountering any linguistic obstructions. He further has the wisdom of skilling means with language to know the sounds and modes of speech of all living beings. He can expediently and cleverly reproduce whatever vocal sounds or cries or calls they utter, as well as understanding them all. He also has the wisdom and the spiritual penetrations which enable him to make his body appear by transformation universally within all worlds. And he has the wisdom and resulting spiritual penetration to universally appear reflected in all assemblies to draw near to all the Buddhas and make offerings to those thus come ones. And he has the wisdom to be endowed with all wisdom in every location of undergoing birth. Even when he is in the womb, he is perfectly endowed with the wisdom of all wisdoms. Those are the ten kinds of inconceivable wisdom, also ten kinds of inconceivable spiritual penetrations. Sutra Disciples of the Buddha once the Bodhisattva Mahasattva dwells in these ten wisdoms, he then can gain an entry to ten kinds of universal entrances. What are the ten? They are all ones entering into the path of a single hair, the path of a single hair entering into all worlds, the bodies of all living beings entering into a single body, a single body entering the bodies of all living beings, inevitably many compass entering a single thought, a single thought entering ineffably many compass, all Buddha dramas entering a single drama, a single drama entering all Buddha dramas, ineffably many locations entering a single location, a single location entering ineffably many locations, ineffably many faculties entering a single faculty, a single faculty entering ineffably many faculties. All faculties entering non-faculties, non-faculties entering all faculties. All thoughts entering a single thought, a single thought entering all thoughts. All spoken sounds entering a single spoken sound, a single sound entering all spoken sounds. All three periods of time entering a single time, a single time entering all three periods of time. Those are the ten. Commentary. Universal. Worthy Bodhisattva again says, All Jew disciples of the Buddha, once the Bodhisattva Mahasattva dwells in this ten wisdom, he then can gain entry to ten kinds of universal entrances. He can certify to entrance those ten kinds of states of universality. What are the ten? They are all worlds entering into the path of a single hair, into one single hair pore, the path of a single hair entering into all worlds. One tiny hair paw can go to all worlds. This is an example of how the great appears within the small, the small appears within the great. Great and small are interfused and unobstructed. The ordinary people feel this state could never exist, but when you certify to the wisdom of spiritual penetrations of a Buddha state, this is a very commonplace occurrence. Uh, occurrence. The bodies of all living beings entering into a single body, a single body entering the bodies of all living beings. This again is an example of how the one and many are unobstructed. Ineffably many compass entering a single thought, a single thought entering ineffably many compass. As long a time as ineffably many great compass can contract to just one instant of thought, that single thought can expand to fill ineffably many great compass. 
all Buddha dramas are entering a single fundamental drama. A single fundamental drama entering all Buddha dramas. Inevitably, many locations entering a single location, and also a single location entering inevitably many locations. Inevitably, many faculties entering a single faculty. A single faculty entering inevitably many faculties. All faculties entering non faculties. Non faculties entering all faculties. They enter into nothingness, and from nothingness, there further arise all faculties. All false thoughts entering a single thought. A single thought entering all thoughts. All spoken sounds entering a single spoken sound. A single spoken sound entering all spoken sounds. All three periods of time entering a single time. A single time entering all three periods of time. Those are the ten kinds of states of universal entry. Sutra, disciples of the Buddha. Once the Bodhisattva Mahasattva has made such contemplations, he then dwells in ten kinds of supremely wondrous minds. What are the ten? They are dwelling in the supremely wondrous minds. Supremely wondrous mind of all thoughts of living beings having no place of reliance, dwelling in the supremely wondrous mind of the ultimate realm of empty space, dwelling in the supremely wondrous mind of the boundless drama realm, dwelling in the supremely wondrous mind of all profoundly secret Buddha dramas, dwelling in the supremely wondrous mind. Of all deep and undiscriminating dramas, dwelling in the supremely wondrous mind of casting out all doubts and delusions, dwelling in the supremely wondrous mind of all worlds being level and equal without distinctions, dwelling in the supremely wondrous mind of the sameness of all Buddhas of the three periods of time, and dwelling in the supremely wondrous mind of the limitless. Ness of all Buddha's powers; those are the ten. Commentary: Disciples of the Buddha was the Bodhisattva, who is a Mahasattva, a great Bodhisattva among Bodhisattva, has made such contemplations of universal entry of the three periods of time with the wisdom of spiritual penetrations and transformations. He then dwells in ten kinds of supremely wondrous minds. What are the ten? They are dwelling in the supremely wondrous mind of all worldly language as non-language. He understands whether there is speech or not. The Bodhisattva also attains dwelling in the supremely wondrous mind of all thoughts of living beings being non-existent and having no place of reliance. That is, the path of language is cut off. The place of the mind's workings is extinguished. He is also dwelling in the supremely wondrous mind. Of the ultimate, which is just like the realm of empty space, dwelling in the supremely wondrous mind of the boundless drama realm, dwelling in the inconceivable and supremely wondrous mind of all profoundly secret Buddha dramas, and dwelling in the supremely wondrous mind of all deep and undiscriminating dramas, the Bodhisattva also attains dwelling in the supremely wondrous mind. Of casting out and no longer having all doubts and delusions, dwelling in the supremely wondrous mind of all worlds being level and equal without distinctions, dwelling in the supremely wondrous mind of the sameness of all Buddhas of the three periods of time, and dwelling in the supremely wondrous mind of the limitlessness of all Buddhas' ten kinds of powers. These are the ten kinds of supremely wondrous minds. Sutra, disciples of the Buddha. Once the Bodhisattva Mahasattva dwells in those ten kinds of supremely wondrous minds, he then obtains the ten kinds of wisdom of scaling means in Buddha dramas. What are the ten? They are the wisdom of scaling means to comprehend profound Buddha dramas. The wisdom of scaling means to bring forth vast and great Buddha dramas. The wisdom of scaling means to proclaim various kinds of Buddha dramas. The wisdom of scaling means to answer the equality of Buddha dramas. The wisdom of scaling means to clearly understand discriminated Buddha dramas. The wisdom of scaling means to awaken to understanding of undiscriminated Buddha dramas. 
The wisdom of scaling means to deeply enter by donning a Buddha dharmas. The wisdom of scaling means to enter Buddha dharmas through a single expedient. The wisdom of scaling means to enter Buddha dharmas through limitless expedients. The wisdom of scaling means to know the non-differentiation about these Buddha dharmas. And the wisdom of scaling means to not retreat in one's own mind and strength from all Buddha dharmas. Those are the ten. Commentary Disciples of the Buddha once the Bodhisattva Mahasattva dwells in those ten kinds of supremely wondrous minds, he then obtains ten kinds of wisdom of scaling means in Buddha dramas. What are the ten? They are the wisdom of expedient scaling means to comprehend and penetrate all the deep and profound Buddha dramas spoken by all Buddhas. The wisdom of scaling means to bring forth vast and great Buddha dramas. The wisdom of scaling means to be able to proclaim and speak various kinds of Buddha dramas. The wisdom of scaling means to enter into the equality of all Buddha dramas. The Bodhisattva also obtains the wisdom of expanding scaling means to clearly understand all dissimilar and discriminated Buddha dramas. The wisdom of scaling means to awaken to understanding of non-different and discriminated Buddha dramas. The wisdom of scaling means to deeply answering a dawning Buddha dramas. The wisdom of scaling means to enter Buddha dramas through a single expedient. The wisdom of scaling means to enter Buddha dramas through limitless expedients. The wisdom of scaling means to know the non-differentiation and the non-difference of valid Buddha dramas. And the wisdom of expedient scaling means to be courageously vigorous and not retreat in one's own mind and strength from all Buddha dramas. Those are the ten. Sutra, disciples of the Buddha. Once the Bodhisattva Mahasattva has heard these dramas, he should bring forth the mind to revere, accept, and maintain them all. Why is that? The Bodhisattva Mahasattva who maintains these dramas with slight expenditure of effort quickly attains Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. He becomes endowed with all Buddha dramas in all respects, the same as the dramas of all Buddhas of the three periods of time. At that time, through the Buddha's spiritual mind, and because the drama is that way, throughout the ten directions there were world systems, many as fine moles of dust, in ten ineffably, many hundred thousand ten million Najutas of Buddha Shetras that experienced the six kinds of quakes. There rain down all sorts of heavens, the passing clouds of flowers, clouds of incense, clouds of ornaments, raiment, raiment, canopies, banners, trimmers, money jewels, and so forth, including clouds of every kind of adornment. There rain down clouds of groups, groups of musical instruments. There rain down clouds of all bodhisattvas. There rain down clouds of ineffably many four marks of first commands. There rain down clouds of ineffably many exclamations of phrases of all first commands. There rain down clouds of sounds spoken by first commands that filled all Dharma realms. There rain down clouds of ineffably many increasings of body. There rain down clouds of ineffably many radiating lights. And there rain down clouds of ineffably many spiritual powers to speak Dharma. Just as in this world system, with its set of four continents, the first come one has seen was seen in the Bodhisattva's palace under the Bodhi tree, in the Bodhi way place, accomplishing equal and proper enlightenment and proclaiming this Dharma. So too in all world systems, throughout the ten directions it was also the same way. Commentary All of you disciples of the Buddha, once the Bodhisattva Mahasattva has heard his ten dramas of wisdom of expedient skilling means, then he as well as all of you should bring forth the mind to revere, accept, and maintain them all. Why is that the case? It's because the Bodhisattva Mahasattva who maintains and cultivates these dramas just described with only a very slight expenditure of effort quickly attains Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. He very rapidly achieves the Buddha fruition of unsurpassed proper and equal right enlightenment. 
may be comes in doubt in his own mind with all Buddha dramas and is able to speak them all. They are in all respects the same as the dramas of all Buddhas, the dramas spoken by all Buddhas of the three periods of time. At that time, through the Buddha's great awesome spiritual mind and because when the wonderful drama of the Flower of Dharma Sutra is spoken, it is that way. Therefore, throughout the ten directions, there were world systems as many as five most of dust in ten ineffably many hundred thousand ten million Nagutas of Buddha Shetras that experienced the six kinds of quakes. At one and the same time, they all cracked, rod and crossed, trembled, surged, and buckled, quaking in those six kinds of ways. They are further rain down, just like uh, in a downpour of rain from the sky, all sorts of precious heaven surpassing clouds of flowers, over with precious clouds of incense, clouds of ointments, as well as precious clouds of raiment, canopies, banners, streamers, many jewels, and so forth, including precious clouds of every kind of adornment. In addition, there rain down precious clouds of groups of musical instruments. There rain down precious clouds of all bodhisattvas, and there rain down precious clouds which were full of ineffably many exclamations of praises of all those commands. Inside those clouds, the bodhisattvas, and those clouds, the Buddhas were constantly being praised. There are also rain down clouds of sounds spoken by first come ones that filled all Dharma realms. Furthermore, there rain down clouds of ineffably many adornments of world realms, and there rain down clouds of ineffably many increasings of good rules for body. There rain down clouds of ineffably many radiating lights, and there rain down precious clouds of ineffably many spiritual powers to speak Dharma. Just as in this Saha world system with a set of four great continents, the four great continents, Purva Videha in the east, Jambuvipa in the south, Appa Rabudanya in the west, Atta Rakuru in the north, Uta Rakuru in the north. The first common was seen in the Bodhisattva's palace where the Bodhisattvas were, under the Bodhi tree in the Bodhi way place. The Buddha was accomplishing equal and proper enlightenment and proclaiming this drama so to in the world systems throughout the ten directions. It was also the same way in all other world systems, the same auspicious portents were happening. Sutra, at that time, through the Buddha's spiritual mind and because the drama is that way, in each of the direction of the ten directions, from further than world systems, many as a fine most of dust, in ten ineffably many Buddha stretches away, there were Bodhisattvas, Masattvas, many as a fine most of dust, in ten Buddha stretches who came to that land. They filled the ten directions and said these words, Good indeed, good indeed, disciple of the Buddha, that you are able to speak this profound drama of all Buddha's thus come ones most great vows and bestowals of predictions. Disciple of the Buddha, all of us have the same name, universal worthy, and each of us has come from a universally supreme world system, where a universal banner self mastery thus come one is to arrive at this land. All of us through the Buddha's spiritual mind in every single location proclaim this drama. All that is spoken is just the same as here in this assembly, in this assembly with its multitudes. It is all the same with no elaboration or omission. We have all received the Buddha's awesome spiritual power to come to this way place and give you certification. And just as all we Bodhisattvas, many as the fine most of dust in ten Buddha Shetras have come to this way place to give certification in all of the world systems throughout the ten directions, it is also exactly the same way. At that time, universal worthy Bodhisattva Mahasattva, through the Buddha's spiritual mind and through the power of his own gurus, contemplated in the ten directions throughout the Dharma realm, from the wish to disclose the Bodhisattva conduct, from a wish to proclaim the first common realm of Bodhi, 
from a wish to speak of the realm of great vows, from a wish to tell the number of compass of all world systems, from a wish to explain all Buddhas appearing in the court with time, from a wish to describe all thus commons appearing in the court with living beings whose rules have matured, to inspire them to make offerings, from a wish to make clear how, when thus commons appear in the world, their work is not in vain, from a wish to make clear that from good rules which are planted, rewards are certainly obtained, and from a wish to show how bodhisattvas of great awesome virtue make their shapes appear before all living beings and speak the drama for them, so they become enlightened, spoke verses, saying, Commentary at that time, through the Buddha's spiritual mind and because when the Dharma is spoken, it should be that way. Therefore, in each of the ten directions, from further than world systems, many as the fine most of dust in ten ineffable, many Buddhas shall trust the way. There, there were Bodhisattvas, Masattvas, many as the fine most of dust in ten Buddhas Shatras, who came to that land, the Saha world. They, the great Bodhisattvas, filled the ten directions and said these words. They said, Good indeed, good indeed, universal worthy Bodhisattva, Jew disciple of the Buddha, that you are able to speak this subtle and wonderful profound drama of all Buddhas, thus come ones, most great vows and bestowals of predictions, disciple of the Buddha. All of us have the same name as you. We are all called universal worthy, and each of us has come from a universally supreme world system where a universal banner, self-mastery thus come on is to arrive at this land, the Saha world. All of us can, through the Buddha's great awesome spiritual might, in every single location, proclaim this wonderful drama of all Buddha's most great vows and bestowals of predictions, just as you are doing. All of the drama is that is spoken is just the same as here in this drama assembly, with its great multitudes as vast as the sea. The drama as it is being spoken throughout the world systems of the ten directions is all the same as here with no elaboration or omission. Nothing is added or subtracted. We, all the Bodhisattvas who have come, have all received the Buddha's great, awesome spiritual power to come to the flower adornment Dharma assembly in this in this way place, and give you certification as you speak this Dharma, and just as all we Bodhisattvas, many as the fine most of dust in the ten Buddha Shatras, have come to this way place to give certification in all of the world systems throughout the ten directions, it is also exactly the same way. In all of them, just as many of us Bodhisattvas have gone to give certification. At that time, universal worthy Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, a great Bodhisattva among Bodhisattvas, through the Buddha's great awesome spiritual power and through the power of his own gurus planted in the past, contemplated in the ten directions throughout the Dharma realm, and from a wish to disclose all the Dharma doors of Bodhisattva conduct, from a wish to proclaim the first commons realm of Bodhidharma, the Bodhidharma doors for enlightening to the way, from a wish to speak of the Dharma doors of the realm of great vows made by Bodhisattvas, from a wish to tell the number of compass of coming into being, dwelling, going back, and disappearing of all world systems, from a wish to explain the cause and conditions for all Buddhas appearing in accord with time, from a wish to describe all thus commons appearing in accord with living beings whose roots have matured. When the Buddha encounters living beings whose roots are ripe, he appears to teach and transform those living beings to inspire them to make offerings to the Buddha, which will increase their blessings and wisdom. Also, from a wish to make clear how, when first commons appear in the world, their work, their merit and virtue is not in vain. From a wish to make clear that, from gurus which are planted, the according rewards are certainly obtained, and from a wish to show how bodhisattvas of great awesome virtue make their shapes appear, 
before all living beings and speak the Dharma for them. So they become enlightened. The universal worthy Bodhisattva therefore spoke verses to express himself again, saying, Sutra, you all should be delighted and abandon all coverings with one mind reverently hear of Bodhisattva's vows and conduct. How all past Bodhisattva's supreme lions among men used to cultivate and practice, I now will state in order, and I will describe all compass numbers, all world systems, and all karma, and how the incomparable honored ones make appearance among them. Commentary Universal Worthy Bodhisattva said, You all should be delighted, really happy, purify your minds, and abandoning all coverings of stupidity and false thinking, rid yourselves of your mad thoughts and wide natures and all occluding obstructions. Concentration are uh, concentrated with and with one mind you should very respectfully and reverently hear the drama I'm going to speak for you of Bodhisattvas, great vows made in the past and the doors of conduct which they cultivated. How all past Bodhisattvas, supreme lions among men, used to cultivate and practice, I now will state in order. I describe those Dharma doors of practice for you in very orderly, orderly succession, succession, and I will describe all compass numbers, the short and long intervals of time in all world systems, along with how those world systems come into being, dwell, decay, and disappear. And I tell you about all the workings of retribution and repayment involved in karma, and how the incomparable honored ones, the Buddhas, become Buddhas and make appearance among them within all world systems.